This tutorial is a quick introduction to 3D Combine 6. It will show you the basic layout of the program, how to do a few basic operations, and highlight some of the differences between this version and 3D Combine 5, which it replaces. Um, I'm starting the program with a 3D image already loaded, but I'll show you how to do this. Uh, you simply click on Open 3D, uh, and I will select uh, a JPS file, which is a stereo file. 3D Combine automatically recognizes as that, and it will load it as a, a 3D file. Uh, I can also open other formats in a similar way, so uh, this file is a MPO JPEG extension, which means it looks like a normal 2D file to Windows, but when I open it, 3D Combine realizes that it is a 3D image. Um, if you have any doubts, then you can simply look at the, uh, the left compared to the right, and you will see uh, that it is different. So if I click on Swap, you see the image changing, so that's if the left and the right eyes get swapped. While I'm on these, all the functions in 3D Combine are now accessed via this top toolbar. So depending on the activity, you can select Process, which is basic processes on the image, Tweaking, which allows you to make uh, fine adjustments to them, so where you are enter values, Automatic, these are intelligent functions within 3D Combine to make adjustments, uh, Adjust, which is manual adjustments that you can make, and Depth, these are depth map uh, operations, uh, which I'll show in a little bit more detail later. Uh, note that only a limited subset of these are available in the free light version. So, if you want to know what a, a given function does, you simply hover over it, and if you look at the bottom left of the image here where the status bar is, you'll see a description of what it does. So for example, if I click on double height images, it will double the height of them. Uh, if I want to undo my last action, I can simply click on undo here. Um, I can also open the filters menu here, which will um, show all the history of what I've been doing, So, which I can clear and revert back to. Uh, my original files. So for example if I halve and double I appear to have got back to where I wanted to but the best thing to do is just to clear them all. Um, alternatively I can just remove one of the filters or I can hide the filters menu entirely um, if I'm not that interested in seeing the history. It's worth knowing that when you're editing videos it's the filter build up is what will be applied to the video when you edit them. So the best way to learn about these functions is really to try them uh, these are all, in the process menu, these are all basic processes that you might want to apply to your image. So you can smooth an image, you convert it to grayscale, um, any other number of, of operations really. Uh, some alpha uh, operations, these are transparencies, should the image be equipped with them. Um, I can also uh, filter out a particular color, so let's say I, uh, I want to filter out the red from an image. That will filter out the red channel from just the left image. Okay, in the tweak options there's a number of uh, functions I can apply, uh, one of which is Cardboard. So this sets the images for viewing with uh, a device such as Google Cardboard where you need the pin cushion effect. You need the aspect ratio of your phone, most devices are probably about 1.8. And as you can see, it prepares an image that you can view on Cardboard. Uh, to preview an image, you click on Preview Save, and this shows you the file that would be saved to file. So for example, if I now click on Save Image, um, it will create an image file, and if I pull the folder across into the view, you can see that it has created a, a file which I could pull across to my cardboard enabled phone and view in 3D. I can also undo that and I can see a real time preview of whatever the effects are that I've currently applied to the image. Should you be taking your own images, there are functions such as automatic or vertical alignment or manual vertical alignment. So in this instance, I can choose to tell the program that my images are a number of pixels out. Uh, and align them. Um, I can choose to crop it, I can pad it, I can adjust the gamma, so if I want to uh, to make it a bit brighter, I can do so. Um, I can also um, go into uh, adjust mode, so this is manual options for, for similar things. So for example, uh, you saw me uh, adjust the alignment before, I can now do it using the Adjust Alignment tool. So here I can shift the image left. There you go. So there's the images being shifted horizontally into alignment, or I can shift them vertically in and out of alignment. Um, one of the easier ways to do this is to select something such as the anaglyph output, and then it's much easier to see how the two images align with each other and get it absolutely perfect. Uh, by adjusting the horizontal alignment, I'm moving the image in and out of the screen. So I'm affecting 
I can either pull the screen, the image kind of right out of the screen, or drop it back if it's uh, causing eye strain. Once I've got the image how I want, I just unclick that, and now I can keep those changes. Uh, and as always, it's created a filter, so I can remove one or both of the operations that I just applied. Likewise with gamma, I want to make the image brighter, I can do so from here. Um, and I can immediately undo them, and I can also adjust the brightness by bringing in the top and the lowest levels. So there you see I'm bringing down the brightest part of the image, so I'm enhancing the brightness in here, I'm bringing up the darkest part, so I'm enhancing the contrast. And that one's probably better viewed, either parallel or if you like, just as a one of the eyes. If I move away from that, there's a number of automatic functions. So as well as a manual alignment, I can also choose to do an uh, automatic alignment. Pro allow the program to do it, and it will make the, any adjustments automatically and appropriately. I can match the colors in the left and right eye. Uh, this is already a pretty good uh, image, so there's not too much fit to do. Um, and then there's a certain number of other uh, processes which may or may not be of interest. Remember, these are all building up in the filters list. so. If, if I get too many things in it starts to become slow to undo so I'll, I'll clear out the list okay um, another example I'll show you is to open a, an anaglyph image so this one is a color anaglyph and the problem with color anaglyphs is although they're very easy to view they destroy the color information what I can do now is I can get 3d combine to automatically repair that so basically it looks at the images uh, in the left and the right it aligns them and then it shares the color information as you can see I've now got uh, a full uh, color 3d image completely automatically and I can now save that image uh, in whatever format I want um, I can also should I choose to edit multiple images at the same time so if I just go back and open two of the images that I've already opened these now appear in batch mode and as you can see I get forward and back at the top so I can cycle between the two and any uh, functions that I apply to one will automatically be applied to the other so let's say I want to view a number of images in cardboard I apply my cardboard filter and that will apply to both images and if I now click on save image it will save me it only asks me for a folder rather than a file name and it will save those images in whatever format I want and it will batch save all the ones that I've got queued up. So I could convert my entire cardboard, uh, collection to cardboard compatible images in one go. And as you can see, those two PNG files have now been created there and there with the original file names. In addition to editing pictures, I can edit videos in exactly the same way. Um, in this instance, I just click on Open 3D Video instead. Uh, I'll select a video I've got here in parallel format. Um, I get the buttons along the top as before, except this time they skip frames uh, rather than images. So I can skip forward a number of frames, um, I can skip backwards a number of frames, I can rewind the video, uh, or I can just play through it. Um, if I actually just want to view the video, then I can go into preview mode, uh, I can click on color and go for argument's sake, and I can click on full screen, and that will give me the video uh, with sound. Um, there you go, you can see it in action. Um, the other thing that I can do is I can apply different filters as I could with the images. Uh, so for example, if I wanted to um, flip the image, um, then I can do so. That gets added to the filters, and then that will happen to every frame of the video. Uh, I could also do things like uh, vertical alignment, uh, full color recovery, all that will work in video just as well as it does with images. Um, one final thing I'm going to demonstrate is that I can then save that uh, video uh, I can save it as a lossless which is a high quality but the large file or a compressed file which is what I'm going to do and that's suitable for most applications As you can see it plays through the video converts it to a color anaglyph and flips it as I've requested okay um, one more thing that I can do is 2d to 3d conversion of videos themselves so there's a couple of ways to do this, but the easiest way is just to show you using this macro here. 
Uh, if I click on video 2D to 3D, it will prompt me to open a file, which I will. And then it says to tell it what format I want. So again, I'm going to go for anaglyph because it's easy. Um, you see what's happened is it automatically added the uh, auto 2D to 3D uh, function uh, into it. So that's this function has already been put into the filter list for me. Uh, so all I have to do is click on save video. Uh, I can select the output again. Um, and then it will automatically convert this 2D movie to 3D. Uh, and all I have to do is, is leave it to run. Okay. Uh, that's a brief overview of all the functions that are available. Uh, there's a number of different tutorials that I'm going to be releasing that show you details on the different functions and what they do. Um, but for now, that should be enough to get started. Uh, to view these tutorials, you can visit the homepage, you can see our Facebook page, or you can go to more tutorials on YouTube.